And so, on the fifth day after the Feast of St Barnabas, in the thirteenth year of King John's reign, did the ignoble scoundrel Gerard de Furneval, Lord of Hallamshire, launch a most grievous assault upon the person of his master, William de Warren, the Earl of Surrey. During the melee, several of the Earl's servants were maimed and his prized Destria injured. In response, the King decreed that the Lord of Hallamshire be stripped of his possessions and brought to heel. The spark that lit the tinderbox between de Warren and de Furneval can be traced back to an altercation in the Rivelin Valley, to the north of the town of Sheffield. This forested valley was home to a great many stags, and was prized by the Lord of Hallamshire as a hunting preserve. One morning Gerald was riding with a small group of huntsmen on the trail of an eighteen-point stag, when he came across a group of archers gathered around the corpse of his quarry. Thinking they were poachers, he drew a sword and set about the men, killing one instantly. Before he could strike down a second, a cry went up. The men were in the service of William de Warren, who emerged from the undergrowth to harangue the impetuous Lord of Helmshire. Gerard demanded to know why William was hunting on his lands, and the Earl asserted that as a custodian of the King's northern lands he could hunt where he pleased. After spending much of the morning arguing over the two steaming corpses, the two lords paid each other compensation, allegedly settling the dispute. Neither man was satisfied with the sum of shillings that changed hands, and a great enmity grew between them. winding through dense woodland or across a windswept moor. The nearest habitation indicated only by a plume of smoke smudged across the horizon. A hunting horn brays. The ambushes break cover. A shower of arrows or bolts arcing overhead. What's it to be? Fight or flight? While escorting a group of monks across the mountainous borderland between Yorkshire and Derbyshire, William de Warren's retinue find a barricade of tree trunks and boulders blocking their path. Before they can react, a hail of arrows slash into their column. The defenders' retinue must fight off the ambushers and escape the battlefield via the board edge opposite their deployment zone, while the attacker's retinue must try and kill all the defenders. When all groups are praised and both players are ready to start, each rolls a d10 for initiative, and the one who rolls the highest can choose to take the first action or defer to their opponent to start the game. The game lasts five turns, and the six turns played if any unit has chance of exiting the table. The defender calculates the points values of all the friendly warriors that escape the battlefield, doubling the amount of any friendly warriors that are commanders. The attacker calculates all the points values of the enemy warriors their retinue slays during the battle, doubling the amount of any enemy warriors that are commanders. The player with the highest total wins the encounter and gains one campaign victory point. On the battlefield terrain you can see woods and shrubs, that an area terrain, buildings that block the line of sight, walls, fences and hedges that are obstacles and can take up defensive positions, hills, plus one attack rolls if you are higher, ploughed fields and crop fields that give you defense rolls, and also the barricade that can be taken up as a defensive position. William de Warren and his veteran mounted knights Equipment, sword, falchion for William de Warren, mail, bodied horse and small shield. He has three actions that can give to his retinue if required. Regular foot sergeants. Equipment, spear, leather padded jackets and small shield. Veteran mounted sergeants. Equipment, spears, 
mail and medium shield. Veteran Bowman, equipment bow. Green militant monks, green unit, equipment, hand weapon, and a small shield. Gerard de Fenival and his regular mounted knights. Their equipment is sword, lance, mail, bodied warhorse, and a medium shield. They have three actions that can distribute to the units. Green spearmen, their equipment is spears and they have one action. Irregular crossbowmen, their equipment crossbow and leather padded armor, one action for them as well. Regular mounted sergeants, Equipment, sword, mail, and large shield. William de Warren deploys his archers, his veteran archers at the center. Uh, he wants them to move along the road and then try to shoot uh, towards the unit that will be defending the barricade. Being veteran and having a quite strong attack dice, uh, they will be perfect to try to weaken the unit that is protecting the barrication, taking advantage uh, of their speed and obviously uh, strength. Uh, the regular foot sergeants will be deployed in uh, the, towards northeast. Uh, they will try to take advantage of the area in the northeast where we have the elevated position, you have area terrain, uh, you have uh, shrubs, you have a small wall, try to escape from the flanks or even attack from the flanks. The same with his veteran mounted sergeants who are deployed beside them to take advantage of this gap between the small walls uh, so they don't delay uh, while moving and try again. Uh, taking advantage of an elevated position and maybe attack the retinue of Gerard de Fenival from the flanks. The militant monks were green and the weaker unit uh, will be deployed between the archers and the sergeants and most probably they will be used um, depending on the situation to support in hand-to-hand -hand combat or escape if the route is free and clear. William de Warren will deploy himself and uh, his uh, veteran mounted knights behind the archers and generally in a position where his command range can support his units, probably taking advantage of the barrication and attacking um, the area there if the archers manage to weaken the unit that Gerard de Fenival will deploy. Now we go to Gerard de Fenival. His first move is to put the spearmen in the center position along the road. The spearmen, although green, they're a quite large unit of 10 miniatures and they're going to be the ones that will defend the barrication. They will be given an extra plus two defense die automatically and the spear's ability negates a counter charge action from their opponent. So this will be a quite critical position for this unit. Beside the spearman, Gerard de Fenival will put uh, the crossbowman. The crossbowman will be on the flanks of the spearman, supporting them by shooting at anything that's coming close to the barrication, trying to weaken any units that will try to charge the spearman. Uh, good strategy. The crossbowmen are behind um, protective and defensible areas. That would mean that if they're charged, they will have a bonus as well. Gerard de Fenival will deploy on the center and uh, as uh, William de Warren, he will try to be close to his retinue, to his uh, so army, to his soldiers, in order to help them with, their, with the, his abilities of inspiring and command. And uh, the sergeants of uh, Gerard de Fenival again are deployed uh, in a position, central position. Um, obviously, Gerard de Fenival has the advantage of seeing the Warrens move before he reacts. So that's an advantage for him. So that's why he's deployed like this. 
So we're at 10-1, and we're ready for all for initiative between the two commanders. Uh, William de Warren uh, has the ability of experienced tactician, and he can roll 2d6 in, if he doesn't have a morale die. But unfortunately, he fails both, and uh, the initiative goes to Joao de Ferdinval. The spearmen decide to move with the one action they have to towards the barricaded area, as was expected. This would mean that there will be an automatic defensible position, getting a plus two, and uh, their defense uh, being a much, much stronger than would have been usually if the green spears would have uh, fought uh, without being in a good uh, defensive position. The longbowman move, as we said, the strategy of William de Warren and the crossbowman do the same thing. Uh, they use one action and they move. They need to cover in front of uh, the barricades. I think there with their uh, arrow fire, they will be able to weaken any possible attacks from, Gerard, uh, from William de Warren. William de Warren then sergeants move. Uh, they cannot cross the hedge. They cannot cross the small wall because of the minus two uh, inches negative uh, modifier and they stop in front of the wall. Uh, Gerard de Fenival, sergeants move again a bit closer. They will probably have seen the deployment of uh, their opponents and they realize that uh, they have to go and block uh, any advance uh, from the north, northeast uh, of the terrain uh, where the two sergeants are there. We continue with uh, the monks. Uh, the monks have moved straight. Uh, they're in between the sergeants and uh, the archers. They're a weak green unit. Uh, they're not very strong. Obviously, they can um, uh, provide support or they can attack weaker units after melee with uh, uh, their comrades. But um, at the moment, they need to be protected. Now, Gerard de, uh, Gerard de Ferneval gives one of his orders to uh, the sergeant to his mounted sergeants uh, so he can move them again the sergeants have to take a morale test and they did a plus four and they did a roll an eight and they pass that means that they can follow now the order they pass the order test they have to move they have a minus one negative modifier to the movement rate because they are crossing over an obstacle uh, but they will pass they have no problem at the moment there is no enemy close to them uh, so he can block them, so the move uh, takes place, they pass the test. But because they have been moved twice, except of course the commander, any unit that moves more than once, it becomes wary. That means a minus one modifier in all the roles. Now the sergeants of, of, of uh, William de Warren will move straight. As we said at the beginning of the deployment, they will take advantage of the gap between uh, the hedges and the s small walls, so they won't get any negative uh, modifiers at the movement for the movement. Uh, they stop there and uh, let's see what's going to happen afterwards. I think there is a class of sergeants coming up. Now William uh, de Warren moves his commander and uh, gets closer to his unit so he can exert his command range and uh, support and can give actions if required. And that's the end of phase one. Again, we have uh, initiative and William de Warren with two dice because his experienced tactician gets the initiative, but he gives it back and uh, it's an explained reason why he did this. Then Gerard Fenival check with his crossbowmen who are in long range above 10 inches to shoot at the longbowmen who, as we said, are the main force attacking the barrication. Uh, they will decide to attack and uh, they attack with plus six because they are crossbows in long range. They're all a zero. A zero is a critical hit but not in long range in shooting. So they have only one hit, one hit, normal hit that the longbowmen have to, the archers have to defend. The archers defend with a plus seven. Uh, they're all a seven and a five and they manage to succeed and saving one hit and um, they will now um, uh, have one in the morale die and um, they will be pushed back one inch for every hit and one inch as per the rule so two inches they will fall behind now it's time for uh, Jean, uh, William de Warren to move his sergeants 
he will move them across uh, this uh, small hill probably on the hill they will get an extra bonus attacking uh, on the hill they're very uh, it's an elevated position it gives bonuses in hand to hand combat and in shooting and um, they will stop their move there they're now going to be they don't want to become wary they can see they are the enemy sergeant's very close, so a sergeant's clash is coming up, and uh, both sergeants are ready for this mighty hand-to-hand combat, this mighty melee. Now, Gerard de Ferneval moves his sergeants as well. He doesn't want to be in downhill position. He gets negative modifiers, so either the hill is, is going higher in this position, so they move and they're ready to face uh, William de Warren's sergeants, mounted sergeants, who we saw previously that in elevated position. The foot sergeants of William uh, de Warren uh, move now. They have a minus two negative modifier for movement. They will move three inches, but now they're against this uh, small um, uh, wall and uh, they will cross uh, this wall without any problem and uh, they will continue the movement from uh, the northeast side of uh, the battlefield. William de Warren now decided to move uh, a little bit closer so he can be to the thick of it and uh, support basically his spearmen and crossbowmen with uh, his own morale that they can use if he's in command range and he, uh, he spends one of his actions. William de Warren does the same thing and he gives an action to his crossbowman who will move and shoot. Now the archers will roll a morale test to see if they will pass, they need a plus three, they pass uh, with a seven, that's the morale. And now they will move and shoot. This is an ability for the archers called every bloody Sunday. The archers can move three inches and shoot even in long range or even in short if they manage to uh, cross uh, to short range. They become wary, as we said before, a second action with minus one modifiers they will shoot at the spearmen behind the blockade and because they're behind an obstacle they will lose one attack die so they will roll with uh, six uh, five dice and they will hit with a plus seven their actual uh, hit number is plus six but because they're wary as we said they had a second move they will hit with the plus seven they succeed only one hit and um, uh, difficult shot behind uh, barrication and the uh, archers being wary uh, but now the spearmen will defend uh, the spearman Jordi Ferival he's inspired commander so he's in close range and he gives a plus one extra defense die to the spearmen who also have a plus two for the barrication for the defensive position they need a plus four they're all a three and uh, a two unsuccessful both and it was there were good possibilities for spearmen to defend well so they will be pushed back and uh, they will lose uh, one um, miniature and they will be pushed back two inches as we said one inch for the hit and one inch as per the rules require now william de warren will move closer to his archers to support them and also to his sergeants and monks and um, he has no more moves and the initiative is finished and we go for, for turn three for turn three again, we will roll. Uh, we, as we said before, we had um, uh, Gerard uh, William de Warren, who has uh, the ability of using two dice if he doesn't have a morale die. And uh, again, he fails. It doesn't work really well for William de Warren, this experienced tactician ability. So Gerard de Ferneval will uh, win the initiative and he will decide uh, what to do next. Again, obviously, uh, we have to go back a bit and talk about housekeeping phase. Housekeeping phase is at the end of every phase, so it's the previous phase. And you have to remove all the tokens from the controlled units and reduce the morale die by one. So if you have a morale die of three, you will reduce it by one. Now, if you are war, if you are uh, wary, you have to take a morale test in order for you to pass and reduce the morale die. So the archers are wary; they have uh, a morale of four. They roll an eight, so they manage to remove their morale die and also remove the wary token. So any unit that is uncontrolled has to take. Um, a morale test before he removes um, and he reduces the morale die by one. So we continue now with William, with the Jacques de Ferneval, who gives order again back to his spearmen to protect the barrication, to block the road. They will again uh, be in a defensible position, a defensive position. They will get a plus two modifier that improves their their defense roll 
by a lot and this is automatic as we said without um, needing to take an action the reaction is was just uh, movement we continue now with uh, William uh, de Warren's archers they move again with every bloody Sunday rule they move again and they're getting closer to their opponents they will shoot at close range but have an option now either to shoot at the spearman or the crossbowman the decision is to shoot probably at the crossbowman. They feel that the crossbowman are more of a threat than the spearmen who are in a well, you know, the static position. So they decide to shoot and um, count uh, the distance between them and in short range and they need a plus five. They roll actually a devastating roll of nine, nine, six, and nine, four possible hits that um, the crossbowman having uh, padded armor and the defense uh, being a plus five uh, have to defend. Uh, this is a quite difficult role for the crossbowman and um, uh, they have really, um, they're, they're not in defended ball position so they're all, they're all a six as you can see here, they're all a zero but the rest are hits. I turned by mistake the dice to four. So they have three hits that means they have more than two hits that means they have more than 25 percent casualties and they have to take a morale test because they are within command range they will use the uh, de Finival's command range but command na number but they fail they fail with a five uh, that would they had to be rolled and they break and they flee they have to do a full move backwards and um, if they're not rallied in uh, the compulsory action phase in the next round, they have to run towards the table edge. The morale die is two because of the two hits and the morale die is added to the required morale number and then you have the final morale number. Willem de uh, Gerard de Fenival decides to move and uh, finish the longbowman, the archers. Um, they're very, they just broke the spearman they just broke the sergeant, uh, the crossbowman. They are inflicting wounds to the spearman, so they're becoming a real threat. So Jean de Fenival is moving towards them, uh, ready to charge uh, using one of his actions. William uh, de Warren's sergeants are in elevated position, and it's time for them to charge the sergeants. They roll for a charge die. The distance. Uh, as per the normal move is not enough, they need a plus two and um, uh, they need a plus one but they roll a plus two so the charge will happen. Now they have to react with uh, Gerard de Fernival's. Uh, this is a mistake here. Gerard de Fernival's sergeants cannot charge back because William de Warren's sergeants have spears and when spears charge you, you cannot counter charge, you can only defend. So we will change the reaction of uh, uh, Gerard de Fernival's uh, sergeants to a defensive action. They will defend, they will close ranks and they will try to um, avoid the attack. So Gerard de Fernival's sergeants will change the reaction and they will do a defensive reaction, they will close the ranks. The sergeants attack, they need a plus four. The roll is zero and a three, a critical hit is the zero. We know that zero has to be defended only by rolling a zero and a nine, the other, the rest are not uh, hits. So a critical hit that uh, the sergeants of Gerard de Fernival have to defend. It's time for them now to roll. They are in defensive reaction. They are sergeants, they need a plus three, and they roll a zero and a seven. They counter the critical hit with a zero. That's a great, great defensive reaction from uh, the sergeants of Gerard de Fernival, and we have a draw. That means that both units will be pushed back uh, one inch and uh, as a reaction and uh, melee stops there. continue now with the movement of the foot sergeants of uh, Gerard of Willem de Warren. Uh, they're moving straight, they're trying to escape uh, within uh, the area terrain. There is a gap, uh, it seems at the moment that there is a possibility for them uh, to go and run across to safety. Gerard de Fernival decides to give an order to, the, to his broke crossbowman to rally and the crossbowman roll a seven, they need a seven and they are pass the morale test, meaning that now they can uh, follow this order. We need a morale test, first of all, to see if we'll follow the order. And they need a plus six to rally. The plus six uh, is because they're using Gerard de Fernival as their commander's morale die, because they are within command range. They're all a seven. 
that means that they will rally now. They will rally, we will remove the broken um, marker and they will become wary. Uh, wary that means minus one in all of their dice, but this is very important because now Joao de Ferneval still has missile troops and it was a problem before. These uh, crossbowmen can be really devastating. They'll have minus one until they remove the wary token, but uh, at the moment it's very important that crossbowmen are back to the, bat the battlefield. Monks now will be moved the same route as the uh, foot sergeants of William de Warren, uh, again trying to escape through the area terrain, the brushes, uh, the hedges, trying to avoid any enemy. And uh, because they are uh, going through the gap, they don't have any um, movement penalties. Both units are supporting each other and uh, both units are moving across the sea, along the same route. Now Gerard de Fenival makes a decision, he rallied his crossbowmen and he will charge. He will charge the devastating longbowmen. He rolls the attack dice because he's further away and he succeeds with a five. Now the problem with the longbowmen is that they are away from the command range of William de Warren. They're nine inches instead of six that you should have been and they cannot react. This would be devastating because they shot already in this round and they don't have another action without being given one by their commander. Their commander is not within command range, so they will just defend with a normal dice. The devastating charge of the bodied war horses of uh, Gerard de Fernival, who gives two dice per miniature. That means that Gerard de Fernival, having five uh, miniatures fighting, five knights fighting, we roll ten dice. And uh, without uh, the re say, defense reaction of the longbow of the archers, this would be devastating. Jacques de Fenival attacks with a plus four, and let's see the hits. He rolls two critical hits already, zero, zero, third zero. This looks really bad for the longbows, for the archers. Four zeros, and then we need everything is above four, except we have three hits that they're failed. So um, these, two, these three hits are not successful but all the remaining seven hits are successful with three critical hits that uh, the archers have to defend. Now the archers have a defense of plus seven and uh, they will roll. They roll a seven and uh, they roll another seven and uh, they roll an eight, a nine, excuse me. And these unfortunately will be wasted as per the rules. If you don't roll a zero to counter a critical hit, your highest defense dies will go to the critical hits. You cannot allocate uh, failures. So that means that all the defense dies of the archers have failed. And that means that the whole unit will be annihilated, devastating. The mounted war horses just trampled over the archers, destroying them. And that would mean that uh, William de Warren, seeing his unit, being destroyed will get one morale die. The other units cannot see them. They were not within six inches of the destroyed units, so their morale stays as is. Now the bodied horses have an overcharge roll, so they need to overcharge. They cannot be controlled that easily after a charge and you roll a d6 and you add the miniatures killed by the unit you destroyed and you have the overcharge distance. Five plus four is nine. So the two commanders are face to face they're ready to attack the hated enemy. But Gerard de Fernival, who has the overcharge because of the bodied war horses, has to rein them in. Bodied war horses must rein in. They're out of control after the overcharge. So he must take a morale test in the next round. Uh, otherwise, he cannot move at all. The rein in uh, happens automatically in the next round, but uh, currently uh, he must roll for morale. We continue now to turn four. Things are getting very exciting. But before we do any movements, we have the housekeeping phase. As we said, we need to reduce the morale die by one for the units that they're under control. Uh, we have to roll four rally tests for units that are wary. And um, we cannot do anything if a unit is shocked. Um, so th we're removing all the tokens before we continue with um, around uh, the next round. 
Now the crossbow men are wary and they have a morale die of two and if they want to reduce it they have to take a morale test with a minus one modifier and a plus two modifier. So that means that uh, they need to roll a six, a plus six, they roll a seven and the worry talking is removed, they are successful and they reduce their morale die by one, uh, making it one from two. Crossbowmen now are ready to take action without any negative modifiers. Now we're all for initiative. Again, the two dice of uh, William de Warren don't help him. And Joao de Feneval takes the initiative and he will rein in now the horses. He will remove the uncontrolled state of the horses so he can act in uh, the round, in this round coming up. So we're all a morale, a raw morale test and um, we need to check, we need a plus four to rein in the horses. Uh, Joao de Feneval rows a five and he manages to control his horses. Now this is considered action and I made a mistake, Joao de Feneval should have not um, acted immediately, he had waited uh, for the reaction of uh, his opponent, but uh, it didn't really affect that much uh, the game and mistakes happen on the battlefield. So Joao de Feneval charges his hated opponent, William de Warren, with the mounted war horses. He has bodied war horses, he has two dice per knight who is attacking and this is going to be a devastating battle. We, do, we know that William de Warren doesn't have bodied war horses, he has just bodied horses, he was not ready, he doesn't have a lance. Gerard de Ferneval has a lance and he has to roll the, the huge number of dice to attack with a plus four. And now uh, plus four and we see how many hits, we have one hit. Another hit from here we see we have two critical hits at the moment from zeros that they have to be defended only by zeros. We have more fours, all the dice are successful, all the dice are possible hits that uh, William de Warren has to defend. It's a devastating charge from a bodied war horses of Gerard de Ferneval uh, with his lance that uh, can, if cause an injury, um, you roll for a shock test and not a break test. So let's see what William de Warren will do. He will defend all these dice. He has two zeros for critical hits, as you can see here, and he needs to score at least two zeros uh, to negate those. So William de Warren, he needs a four plus, that's his morale. And uh, let us see, and he defends almost everything. And he defends also the zeros. So one zero is defended, he rolls a zero. Another critical hit is defended by a save, so he rolls another zero, great defense, and all the hits, all the hits, not all the hits, except two, all the hits are saved. A great defense from a great commander who is, uh, well, less equipped than his opponent. He was not expecting this ambush. But now we have uh, two hits pending, and this is where we go to the shield roll rule and the secondary defense. So the critical hits are defended and all the rest are defended, except um, two hits uh, that can be defended from William de Warren by rolling uh, the shield. Now there is a shield rule, it's a secondary defense that uh, units with shields have. And if you have a small shield like William de Warren, uh, you roll a plus nine. And if you roll above plus nine, you can save, uh, secondary save the hits uh, of your opponent. So a plus nine, a shield roll, and William de Warren uh, rolls sevens and he fails. So two hits against him uh, will be inflicted. So he will move 50%, 50% of his unit. Two knights will be removed. So William Warren will charge back now after he lost two of his knights with only two dice uh, because he's, um, the, the melee was not simultaneous, he was a charged um, unexpectedly. So he rolls a three, he has a better attack than his knight and his knight rolls a four and there is zero, a critical hit and three, uh, both hits from William de Warren against Joao de Fernival, who has to defend the critical hit with a zero and uh, he has a plus four. He fails one, but he succeeds the other. Now, this is one mistake I made because when you have a bodied war horse, um, you, every knight uh, to be removed 
needs to be inflicted two hits, not one. So you, with one hit, you don't remove a knight. But this counters basically the other mistake we did um, with Gerard de Fernival uh, rallying, uh, reining in the horses and uh, 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 charging again. So the victory is two to one for, uh, will, for Gerard de Fernival. So we'll, we'll put the morale dice two to one and William de Warren is pushed three inches. Now we have to take a morale test, uh, it's 5 plus for William de Warren and he passes so he doesn't break, actually he would have been shocked by losing 50% of his unit but now again Gerard de Fenival has to rein in, uh, roll for the varied horse or ho war horses overcharge. He hits 2 plus 2 hits that he inflicted to William de Warren so that means 4. He will overcharge from the end of the fallback of your opponent so 4 inches from um, the base of William de Warren and he has to rein in also as we said. Now we continue with our movement and we have a minus two negative movement modifier because of this hedge but um, the monks are quite close and they can all cross. Uh, things seem to be quite strange now because by uh, overcharging, uh, Will uh, Joao de Fernival is out of the game a bit. He's a bit further away, and I think William de Warren can take the opportunity to do some action here and uh, take an advantage. So the crossbowmen, seeing the monks and the sergeants moving here on their left flank, uh, they're moving, they're crossing this hedge, and they're moving to intercept them. The same with the sergeants, who go in parallel with the monks. They're trying to cross quickly and run to safety. So let us see how this will play. The same with the spearman. The spearman, there's no point for the spearman to hold the blockade. There is nothing um, there to stop. So they will move um, towards the monks. But the issue is that they have a minus two negative modifier because of the hedge. They're a big unit. That means that not even half of the unit will pass, will cross this hedge. And if you fight hand to hand combat and pushed while you are in an obstacle, you cannot perform your pushback action and you lose another miniature. You will get inflicted another wound and basically you are um, trapped uh, b beside this obstacle. So they decide to stay in the back and hold a defensive position waiting for the monks to pass and then take an advantage. Now the sergeants of William de Warren uh, charge again with the spears. The spearmen will uh, attack ferociously the sergeants of uh, Gerard de Ferrival, who, as I said, because they cannot counter spears, they will be in a defensive position. This is an advantage, a strategic advantage for uh, William de Warren. And we roll. The sergeants attack with a plus four, and they roll four dice, four hits, four, nine, and nine, and a five. Great attack from William de Warren's sergeants. The sergeants of uh, Gerard de Fenival uh, will need to roll a seven, a five, and a plus two for the defensive position. So a three, they need to roll a three to reach a five. So they managed to successfully save all the hits. It was a five uh, to reach. So they have a plus two modifier, so they need a three. So they both units uh, fall back, as we said before, one inch as per the rule standard uh, fallback and um, this battle is really um, very balanced uh, maybe as weapons uh, William de Warren's sergeants are more powerful but the defensive position of Gerard de Fenival is proving um, very difficult to break. Now let's go to turn five and roll for initiative. This is our last turn of the game. But before we go to turn five, let us see the situation we are now uh, with the units and let's see the map. So you see Jean de Ferneval is basically out of control at the edge of the table of uh, his opponent's uh, starting point. William de Warren has a great opportunity to charge and move towards, uh, you know, an undefended uh, barricade and try to cross and save his life. The monks, we said the crossed, and the sergeants also. Uh, the spearmen of William de Warren are ready to attack and try to intercept. The same with the crossbowmen. And there is a balanced battle between the sergeants at the north, at the top of uh, the terrain. So let's see the final round, what surprises we will have. So before we go to phase five, round five, let's recap and see where we are. Here is the area that William de Warren's troops have to reach in order to uh, escape to safety. The sergeants, I think, have chances, the mounted sergeants, but only if they break their opponents. 
the monks and the foot sergeants have an open space and an open route, but the spearmen and the crossbowmen are moving to block, so it would be difficult for them to reach safety, in my opinion. Now, William de Warren, who is the most important part of this battle, because if he escapes, his uh, army points, his unit point is doubled because he is a commander, needs to escape and has the opportunity now. The bodied war horses uh, of uh, Gerard de Ferneval, who are very powerful, have the disadvantage of having the overcharge and then being reined in. And rein in is an action that gives William de Warren an action advantage so he can move and gallop fast because his movement rate is seven and his opponent's is six. So he has a great opportunity to uh, open a gap and try to escape to safety. Now, this uh, role is very important. Uh, William de Warren cannot use his superior tactician uh, advantage because he already has a morale die and uh, he cannot use this uh, two dice he has to use one so let us see uh, how this initiative will go it is very important for william de warren to escape and give extra points uh, to his retinue so we roll for initiative two dice and let us see what the result will be. And it's a 4 to 2, and William de Warren unexpectedly wins the initiative. And now he can move an open space, open a gap between him and his pursuers. Uh, now that they have to rein in the horses, he moves seven inches, he's faster, and he's moving towards safety. Now, Gerard de Ferneval has to rein in his mounted war horses. He needs to use an action for this. That means he will be one action behind from his opponent. Now, the rainy war horses, he must uh, roll for a morale test and use his own morale of a four plus. So let us see if he will be able to do it. He rolls a seven and he succeeds to rein in the horses, stop them and uh, control them. That means that in the next initiative, he may also use his extra orders, his extra actions in order uh, for him uh, to start moving towards the center of the battlefield where his troops are trying to stop William de Warren's troops. I'm turning them around. That's no meaning actually in a skirmish game. Um, there is no facing, but uh, it's just for a visual effect. So I know that um, this is the case that he reined in the horses and he's fine to attack. The monks are moving, they will move uh, six inches, that's their movement rate. Um, they will try to escape, but uh, obviously this will be very difficult because now uh, the William uh, Gerard de Ferneval's spearmen will charge them. They have a minus two negative modifier to the movement rate because they have to cross the obstacle, so uh, they will not be able to attack them in full strength. Um, probably the first two um, rows of miniatures of fighting, uh, usually, and that would have probably been four to five, um, four miniatures to four miniatures, eight miniatures against uh, the monks, but now this second rank is blocked because of the hedge, and uh, the monks are lucky, they will fight only uh, against three dice of uh, the spearmen. The spearmen now will have to attack uh, with a plus eight, they are green spearmen, and they attack with three dice only, and they fail. All their rolls are failed. And this is um, very, very good news for the monks. Both um, you, units will be pushed back one inch uh, as per the rules, and uh, this uh, will be the end of this melee. Now the monks can have an opportunity of fleeing if they be able to win the next initiative, the sixth round. The sergeants now will move, they will move five inches, but they have again a minus two modifier to cross uh, the hedge, but they are adjacent to the hedge, so they have no problem crossing and trying them themselves as well to pass and uh, flee to safety. Gerard de Fenival's crossbowmen now change their minds. They believe, and that's true, that the most important target is the commander and not uh, his troops. So they change uh, location, they change facing, and they're trying to shoot him while he's trying to uh, gallop to uh, safety. 
Gerard de Ferival now will move his uh, troops as well. He moves his retinue, or he moves only six inches because he has a bodied war horse, but he's trying to enter the battlefield again. The sergeants now, the most important part of the battle, the sergeants can escape, uh, the sergeants of, Gerard, of William de Warren. The sergeants of Gerard de Ferival cannot fight back, they cannot countercharge spearmen, so they will be in a defensive position. The spearmen of uh, mounted spearmen of, Gerard de, of William de Warren will attack now and will have melee. Now, this is a very critical melee because if uh, William de Warren's mounted sergeants manage to win and push back, uh, they will have an opportunity to flee. So they attack with a plus four and they roll two hits that uh, the sergeants of uh, uh, Gerard de Fenifal have to defend. They have a four plus, they defend a one, but they fail the other one. But this roll cannot be defended with a secondary roll of uh, shield. You remember I was telling you there is a secondary roll of shield, but because this uh, defense was very weak, it doesn't get the opportunity to be uh, for a second chance of defense with the shield rule. Now we move one miniature and now we have to push back the losers two inches, but unfortunately they don't have the space, they're blocked by the hedge. So they have to move one inch and they're trapped. That means that uh, they are in trouble. Uh, they would have removed another miniature if there was an opponent close to them uh, in one inch, but there isn't. But we don't forget that the winners have a consolidated move. So William de Warren's sergeants can move one inch and close the distance, and then this rule will apply. So obviously William de Warren now with their consolidated move will move one inch. They will trap the sergeants of Gerard de Fenival, causing them havoc uh, behind, uh, well, trap behind the hedge. And unfortunately, they have to remove another miniature. They will have to remove another miniature because they're trapped, they are fighting for their lives and they're trying to survive, but they don't have an escape route. So another miniature will be removed from the sergeants of uh, Gerard de Ferneval. Now the sergeants of Gerard de Ferneval have to take a morale test. They lost 50% of their uh, total number and they will have to roll for a break test and they roll a plus seven they need, they roll a nine and they succeed. Otherwise, they would have been shocked. So they succeed and they stay in position, but things are looking very precarious. Uh, they are very in a very difficult position. Now, William de Warren has a six inch move and he will charge the crossbows with his other actions. He has three actions, don't forget. The crossbows cannot shoot as a reaction to being charged as the crossbow is too slow. So William de Warren rolls a three and a four because he has a better attack and he rolls a zero. This is a critical hit, the one is a failure. So a zero that uh, the crossbowmen of Gerard de Fenival have to defend, but only with a zero. Critical hits, as we said, are defended only by rolling a zero, even though the defense of the crossbowman, the normal defense of the crossbowman is a plus five. So the crossbows will roll and um, will have to roll a zero. They roll a nine close, but they fail. So two hits, one hit against the crossbowman, who will now have to be pushed back two inches, one inch for every hit and one inch as per the rules. They will be pushed back and obviously take a morale test and uh, they will have to see if they will pass, otherwise they will break. Crossbows roll for morale, they need a plus six, they roll a four and they fail. And that means that they have to uh, do a full move away from their attackers. And um, if they don't rally in the next round, they will run. That's a double move. Now they break, they fall back. A double move that will take them outside uh, their table. And that means they're out of the battle. Now, William de Warren will consolidate and will move a few inches closer to safety. And he will move around four inches. He must not allow closer than one inch from their opponent, but uh, four inches are fine. He's just at the edge of uh, safety. Gerard de Fenival moves six inches slower. Bodied war horses are slower, they're powerful, but they have, you see, many disadvantages. So it's very important to choose strategically. Sometimes maybe bodied war horses are not the best choice. So Gerard de Fenival moves still is quite far away. His uh, opponent seems ready to escape. So a sixth round will be played as the mounted sergeants and the mounted knights have a chance of escaping. It's very obvious that uh, the sergeants have a chance if they attack again and destroy the sergeants of Joachim de Fenival. 
So before we go to the last round, round six, let's recap. We see that William de Warren can escape with his sergeants in the next round. He's at the edge totally. The monks um, don't think that they have the opportunity of escaping um, if they attack again with the sp uh, from the spearmen, the sergeants, the foot sergeants. Obviously, they cannot escape. Uh, they're further behind. But uh, you see here Gerard de Fenival who fell behind because of his uh, mounted war horses being out of control, overcharging. He's out there. He's not a factor in the battle, so he needs uh, to move. So we're all for initiative. William uh, Gerard de Fenival wins the initiative and he moves his war horses. Um, but I think it's a little bit too late. His opponent already is at the edge of escape. The crossbows fail their morale test and uh, they move, they run outside the battlefield uh, and uh, they are removed from the game. Now this will mean that one morale die will be given to Gerard de Fenival who saw his troops uh, breaking. Now we have a choice, we'll see what uh, William de Warren will do. Is he gonna decide to run and gallop outside to safety or he will stay and support his troops? It's very important for him to escape. He gives double points, as we said, to his army if he escapes. And I don't think there is even a, a consideration of him staying, he escapes and uh, he is safely away from his enemy. Now the sergeants get the initiative and they attack uh, the monks. They don't want the monks to escape. Less points for Gerard de Fernival. The monks will defend. They cannot uh, charge back because uh, they are facing spears. So the spearmen of Gerard de Fernival will attack uh, the monks who are in defensive position. So the green spearmen attack. They need a plus eight. Uh, they're all two hits, actually three hits, a nine, a nine, and an eight. Very good uh, role if we consider they needed a plus eight and now the spearmen of the monks of uh, William de Warren will defend they are uh, need a plus five because they're in defensive position they're only five and a six so they defend two hits and they have one hit remaining that they can defend with a secondary defense of their shield they have a small shield and they need a plus nine they try the roll a one they're unsuccessful the shield roll was not successful so one hit they will be pushed back two inches and they will remove one miniature one monk is dead and it doesn't seem that the monks have any chance of fleeing now william uh, gerard de fernival uh, saw his opponent uh, fleeing he has no chance but attacking the remaining units of uh, william de Warren to get as many uh, points as he can his body war horses attack across the hedge uh, the sergeants will have an automatic protection, so the mounted knights attack, roll is a plus four, Gerard de Fenival rolls. He doesn't roll a critical hit and that's bad, but um, most of the dice are successful. Don't forget that the bodied war horse has um, limitations and has n negatives, but has positives that gives two attack dice to the riders. So we have uh, four, five, six, seven, eight possible hits against the sergeants. Now, the sergeants don't have a morale die and uh, the Gerard de Fenival had a morale die. So we had to remove one attack die as per the rules. I forgot this, so one hit will be removed so we can be fair. Now, the foot sergeants need a defense roll of plus four because they're automatically defending. As we said, they're behind the hedge. Half of them are uh, touching the hedge so they're getting the defensive position automatically so they will defend with the plus four uh, the onslaught of Gerard de Fernival's mounted knights so they roll and uh, we'll see now what uh, the results will be and um, they roll quite well uh, I think they say one two three four five hits and they failed only two the threes the threes that can be re-rolled with the medium shield that uh, the foot sergeants have, uh, secondary defense, uh, they have a medium shield and they can roll with a plus eight. So let's see if they will succeed in saving them. They roll a four and a seven. No, they don't. So they lose two miniatures, 50% casualties. And if they lose the battle, they'll have to take a, a test uh, for avoiding being shocked. Now the sergeants will fight back. They were in a good defensive position and they will fight back and they need a plus four. They roll a critical hit and a seven. And that's a great roll for the foot sergeants of Willem de Warren who um, fight back. The mounted knights now roll plus four. Uh, they defend the critical roll with a zero 
and uh, a three is a failure. Uh, they failed in saving on the three, but uh, they have a defense, they have a secondary defense that they fail also, so there is uh, one hit for them. Now the sergeants, the foot sergeant, are pushed back in the woods and 50% uh, of the unit has been removed and they have uh, to take a break test. So they roll a six, they need a plus six and they roll a six and they don't break. They successfully save and uh, they stay as they are protected by the area terrain. Now there is a problem for body war horses who have to take an overcharge roll and this will be a six. Now a six will be added to the two miniatures destroyed by uh, the war horses so they have to move eight inches. Eight inches will uh, reach the area terrain that is impossible and that means that um, the overcharge will not be completed they will stop at four inches and they will be trapped it's like being trapped and it's like not being able to enter this difficult terrain so they lose one extra casualty so the Joao de Fenival's impetuous horses uh, overcharge inside woods and they start getting injured and they lose another casualty now we go to the most important part of the battle. We're going to the charge of the William de Warren's mounted sergeants. They will charge, they have their opponents trapped behind, uh, well, in front of a, of a hedge and they cannot escape. They need to roll a plus four in order to successfully hit them. And they roll a six, a nine, a four and a seven, all hits are successful. And that's great because um, this could mean that they will flee and gallop to safety. The mounted sergeant's defense roll is a plus three. Uh, they roll three successful hits, but um, they fail one by rolling a one. This one cannot be re-rolled with a shield roll, as we know a secondary save, but because it's very weak defense and ones cannot be re-rolled uh, with shield defenses. So one more miniature is removed and um, uh, the sergeants of Gerard de Fernival have to move two inches. They cannot, they are trapped, they are blocked, so they get an extra casualty and the last sergeant is removed. He's removed because he's trapped and the sergeants of William de Warren killed him in front of the hedge. Now William de Warren can consolidate William de Warren's Mounted sergeants can consolidate and that will mean that they will gallop, they can consolidate a full move, they don't have an opponent and that means they will gallop to safety. So all the unit of the mounted sergeant is safe and more victory points for William de Warren. So let's recap and see the victory points now that we've finished. So William de Warren uh, escaped, so he gets, as I said, to see, as I told you, it's a very critical uh, miniature to save and he gets 106 points, one mounted knight 27 point and four mounted sergeant 88 points total 221 points. For Gerard de Fenival he killed two foot spearmen, two foot sergeants 36 points, six archers 114 points, two mounted knights 54 points a total of 204 points. So 221 points for William de Warren, 204 points for Gerard de Fenival, one victory point for William de Warren, for the first part of the campaign, the first battle of the campaign, the ambush, he takes the lead and he is ahead. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see each other in the second battle of the campaign. Uh, hope you enjoyed this battle report. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.